Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today we're back to working on the metal planer restoration. Uh, we are getting into short rows on this project. I'm working on the clapper box. Uh, we did run into some fairly significant issues when we took that apart, and it has kind of put me on a stall, but uh, we're making progress. We're getting going back forward on this, and uh, I really want to get this thing knocked out so we can make some chips with that machine. And today, what we're going to be doing is we got the uh, cross slide that is on the clapper box. I call it a cross slide. It moves the cutter up and down. And uh, there is, it's basically like a cross slide on lathe and it's dovetailed ways. But we need to get this thing scraped in and uh, ready to use. So I have got the, the top part of this over here on my bench and we're gonna start scraping it in. Gonna start by scraping the bottom end flat over on the surface plate. Then we will scrape in uh, one of the dovetails on the inside. The other side, there's a gib that goes in here. So we won't scrape that, we'll scrape the gib and we actually have to make a new gib. Uh, and then we will use this as our master over on the part that it slides on and scrape that in to this. So um, let's get started. Start out by zooming in here. And uh, I was, I have not blued this up over on the surface plate, so I really don't know what kind of shape it's in. We'll do that after we make our first roughing pass with the scraper. But I am encouraged because I can still see some of the original scraper marks in here. Now, there's definitely areas on this that are more worn than others. For example, these ends appear to be more worn than the centers. And we got a little bit of area in here. It looks like some moisture got in there. We had a little bit of slight pitting, nothing major. but. By and large, I can still see the planer marks where this was made on the planer originally. And uh, people have been asking, you know, did it come scraped from the factory? And in this case, on this machine, it looks like they just planed it and uh, let it roll out the door. We're actually taking it a step further by scraping it. And, uh, but since this is a worn surface, theoretically, it will be best to go ahead and scrape it and get everything kind of trued back up on it. So to start with, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here. This is how I typically start when I'm scraping. I'm just going to make a blind cross hatch pattern on here, put a pattern across the whole thing. We will then take it over to the surface plate, blew it up and see where we are and then kind of know where we have to go from there. Uh, the reason that I don't just put it over there on the table like right now is uh, with this surface being as, uh, you know, potentially very flat, I'd probably just get a smear. I want to break that pattern up and that will actually help me be able to really see what's truly going on with the high spots. So let me uh, fire up my Biax uh, scraper over here. We're going to power scrape this and uh, we'll get going. So I've got my Biax power scraper here. I've got a blade in here with a fairly large radius on it. It's going to give me a pair of fairly wide scrape mark. I've also got it set on a fairly long stroke. Uh, this is for roughing. Uh, as we uh, get it dialed in, I'll go with a sharper rate or smaller radius on here, which will give me a, a smaller point that we're actually scraping and I'll also go with a shorter stroke to kind of fine tune things. But right now we're just roughing. So uh, we'll do a cross hatch. And scraping, whether it be power scraping or hand scraping, you want to make individual lines and individual straight marks. So I'm trying not to overlap here too much. A little bit of overlap is fine. I want to make sure I come completely off the edge and I'm going at about a 45 degree angle. I'm going to come the other direction from 45 degrees and uh, make my cross hatch. We're breaking up the uh, lines that we made in the previous mark and kind of getting a checkerboard type uh, pattern going on on that surface. All right, we've got a uh, rough pattern here to start with. And um, I'm gonna take my clamps off. This scraping process, 
we're only removing a very small amount of metal each time. If I were to go in there and measure those scrape marks based on past experience, they're a couple of ten thousandths of an inch deep. They're, they're not, we're not moving a lot of metal here. Um, it's a fairly slow process, but you don't want to move a lot of metal. Why are we scraping these? We want to have uh, a flat surface. We want to have good contact from one end to the other. Uh, when we blew it up, we can see how flat we are. And the other thing we're doing is we want to have individual points of contact across here uh, rather than just a solid point of contact. If you have that solid point of contact, the two flat surfaces will stick to one another. They'll actually wear much faster. If we have individual points of contact, uh, you end up with a little bit of place for the oil to go that lubricates in there. And your part will actually wear slower and better over time and hold up better over time. So I'm going to go over to the surface plate now, get it ready to blow it up, and we'll see where we are to start with. I'm over here at the surface plate now. The surface plate is a uh, piece of granite that has been lapped extremely flat. Uh, this plate I've checked out and over this three foot by six foot plate, there is less than a half a thou of um, variation in height from any place on this plate. Uh, it grades an A. Uh, surface plates are graded in either a double A, A, or a B grade. And honestly, for scraping, any of those grades will work fine, but the higher the grade, the flatter the plate is, and, and the flatter your uh, end product over there will be. So um, what I'm doing now is I'm putting some dye on here. I'm just uh, going to then spread that out real thin. I like using this aqua wash, which is kind of an ink, and I actually mix it with a little bit of this blue canode to kind of thin it out just a little bit. And uh, I'm going to get something kind of mix that up by hand and then we'll take a roller and roll it out just taking a little stick here and stirring it up a little bit i like that ink but it is a little bit on the thick side and the blue canode is a traditional um, scraping dye um, and it's a little bit thinner so by just mixing these up it really works out pretty good. When you mix up that blue and black, you really end up with a black. Different people like different colors. Um, the more I do this, the more I like the black. I can just see it better than the blue. But it is a little bit of a kind of based on personal preference. Um, some people like the blue, some people like the black. Just what your eyes can see better. I'm just taking a paint roller here, a little foam roller. I'm spreading out a very thin layer of this on the surface plate. This uh, thin layer then will transfer over to what we just scraped in and we can see where the high spots are. So basically what happens is the areas that contact uh, will transfer. And this is an extremely thin layer. You can see right through it. That's what you want. I got my part, I'm going to lay it on there. First thing I'm going to do is hinge it. And it's actually rotating about right there, which is pretty good. It looks like it might be pretty flat starting out with. Just kind of roll it around, pull it up, and we can see our pattern. So right out of the box, we've got fairly good contact on here. It's not perfect by any means, but you can kind of see from about here to here, we're making good contact. I'm missing contact a little bit in through here, but nothing out on the ends. It's kind of a very similar story over here, kind of on that outside edge, uh, making contact kind of right in through here. The ends are out. And that's kind of what I was noticing looking at it when we started, is I could see some wear on those scrape marks on the ends, and the middle wasn't too bad. So that kind of confirms what we saw earlier. Now what we got to do is come in here and we want to just scrape off the high spots. Uh, so we're just only going to concentrate on these areas that where we're seeing the contact. And what that will do is that will drop the layer down, drop that height down, and we'll just keep doing that until we pick up these lower areas in here that aren't making contact until we get a good pattern from one end to the other. So I'll get my scraper back out and that's exactly what we're going to do. 
So basically I kind of got this area here and this area here that are high. So I'm just going to focus on those areas. I'm still roughing at this point. I'm not really trying to hit individual points at this time. I'm just trying to get these areas down. So I'm just going to go in here and, and do another cross hatch on this. Uh, once I get a little closer, I'll probably only go one pass at a time. I'm going to go two passes here because I know I've got a little ways to go. So um, let's get done. Got a little bit of red ink here on a roller and I just want to put a little bit on here and again that just kind of gives me some contrast. It kind of takes that sheen off of it and you can see that black show better on the red than you can on that silver and kind of wipe it the thick stuff off. And like I said, that black will show up a lot better there. All right, back over to the surface plate. Let's show you what we got. So round two, um, very similar to what we saw last time. Still kind of got these same high areas. However, I did kind of move things out a little bit to the ends. Uh, we're still missing a little bit on the insides here. But uh, another pass with the scraper. Uh, hopefully this will come in pretty quick. All right, I think you see the pattern here, guys. We're just going to keep on going until we get that good coverage from one end to the other. I'll bring you back in a little bit. Just bringing in here and giving you an update. We're still not quite there, but we're getting really close now. Um, I've got much smaller spots in here than I was having a while ago. I've got much wider distribution. Really got pretty good coverage, except for still a couple areas in these corners. Uh, so I'm still kind of bringing down a few areas. What I've done on my scraper is I've shortened my stroke and I've gone to a much finer point. So instead of taking a real wide, broad stroke, I'm taking, I'm really now attacking um, more points in here, really trying to hit all these little black, black spots. You know, in areas where I know I'm heavy, I'm still just kind of sweeping across. But when I get in these lighter areas, I'm just hitting individual points. And um, I'm gonna take it on down some more. So continuing on here. I'm just attacking those areas where I got high spots. And you can see my scraper is taking a very fine uh, points off rather than those broad strokes we were making a while ago. Honestly, I'm probably a little premature to be quite at this stroke, uh, short of a stroke, but I found this works for me. It might take me a pass or two longer to get there, but uh, I also like the uh, results of the look of this, of the finish when you get these little short, fine strokes on your scraper. Well, there you go, guys. I think uh, I'm going to call that good enough. Um, 
I don't know, that's probably 30 points per inch. Uh, on average, yeah, maybe a little light right in here. Maybe a little bit light on that back edge, but you know what? It's going to be good enough, and uh, I'm happy with what we got there. So uh, next up, we need to scrape this dovetail edge on the inside here. Uh, I'm going to get set up to do that, and we'll bring you in there and show you that process as well. And now we need to scrape this dovetail and uh, do that. I just got it clamped down to my bench to hold it. Uh, and we're going to be going up inside this uh, here as well as we can. I'll have to get the hand scraper and the scrape in the very back. You just can't get back there good with the power scraper. But we're going to start with the power scraper and uh, see if we can't get her. Right now I'm just doing a rough and pass, putting a cross hatch on. And I'm going to get it from the other angle, but uh, we'll be in front of the camera to do that. See Burrett. Now check this dovetail. I can't really get this over on the surface plate because obviously that inside corner won't fit in there. So we'll be using the straight edge. This is a cl very classic example of where you would use a straight edge. I've got the dovetail. Uh, on this end so uh, we can basically take this and put it into the dovetail down here to get a print. So I did, before I did this, I went over and just checked this on the granite plate. I uh, had already had that section blued up over there so I've rubbed it on there and we got, it looks great, didn't need to touch it up or anything. So uh, we are ready to go and we'll just come in here. We will lay it down there in that dovetail like such and just rub it back and forth and basically what I'm doing is is I'm taking the the equivalent of the uh, granite to the part so that we can uh, see what's going on. So I don't know how well you can see this but it's very clear that uh, it's making contact in the top part and a little bit down in the bottom. The bottom's where I probably couldn't get in there with the power scraper, I'll probably just go in there with my hand scraper and knock that stuff out real quick and I'm going to touch this back up here. It's almost like a straight line across there, like uh, it wore more in the bottom than up here. I um, have to check that piece is going against, but it looks very much like uh, it was only making contact in the back and you got a little bit of wear there and the front here looks like might be more of an original surface. So um, let me make another pass or two and we'll be back. My back's power scraper is great. I love it, but it does not replace a hand scraper. There's still times you need one. And this is a good example because I can't really get down into that very bottom of this uh, dovetail with the hand scraper. I mean, with the power scraper, but I can with the hand scraper. And I've actually got a cutter here that I've it's only sharp on one side and I relieve the other side so that it could actually go as far back in that dovetail as possible. Let me come to the other angle and we'll blew it up again. I've made several passes now and I've just uh, resorted to using the hand scraper here on all of this. It's just uh, easier to get down in here. So uh, we are coming in here and doing this the old fashioned way. It still works. And if you want to learn scraping, I would highly recommend that you start by uh, learning how to hand scrape and then move up to power scraping once you kind of perfect your skills. Or maybe not perfect them, but get more proficient at them. <laughs> I honestly do mostly power scraping now, so it's a good practice here for me to pick up the hand scraper and do this by hand. And just like that, I think we got uh, this thing spotted up looking good in that dovetail. And I think we've got this piece all scraped up. It's ready to move over to the second piece and we will use this as the master uh, to scrape that in. This is the bottom part that the uh, 
cross slide here slides on and just to kind of show you how this goes uh, fits over the dovetails like such and it slides up and down the clapper box actual mounts on this pivot point right here that's where the tool cutter is and uh, you can adjust the height of the cutter by cranking a crank on this and sliding it up and down it also has an automatic function where on each stroke it moves down uh, or up uh, a little bit uh, depending on how you have things set so again we will use this as the master this is basically my straight edge that i'll be using since we've already scraped it in i will comment that ideally you would like for your master to be longer than the part that you're scraping but in this case i was able to take this to the surface plate and actually get the bottom uh, in the same plane and also parallel to one another so it's it's just easier to do it this way if i had done this with a straight edge i'd have come in here and got this side flat and this side flat, but I wouldn't have any guarantee that they weren't running, you know, that they were parallel to one another or that they were in the same plane. This way, I know that they are. So uh, that's what we're gonna be doing and it'll be just fine. So I'm gonna slide this off for right now. And just like before, we're gonna start by just putting a rough uh, scrape pattern on here, crisscross back and forth blindly and uh, go from there. I'll also just real quickly comment, the reason that I've come over to my welding table to do this on is if you look at this casting, it has a boss on the bottom, so it won't lay flat, but I've got a convenient hole here that it goes right down into uh, that's just gonna make it really, really better over here to scrape this in here. So I'm gonna fire up the power scraper. We're gonna put a rough crisscross pattern on there and uh, we'll go from there. I'm just gonna get back here in this very back corner with the hand scraper. It's just like before, it's hard to get that power scraper up into that very back corner. I can get in there pretty good with this hand scraper. Interesting. Okay, so we got pretty good contact from almost to the bottom, but we're missing a spot right here and it's on both sides, very similar. And what's interesting is that when this machine set up for years and years and years, this thing set right there. And what we're seeing is, is where it was in contact, it pretty much has good contact over here but the areas that were exposed to the weather and where we had some rusting and pitting they're lower so that makes a lot of sense so i think what we're gonna have to do is just come in here and plow out a good bit of this uh section where the uh the other piece was sitting originally and once we do that hopefully uh we can get this thing to come in pretty quickly so i'm not gonna uh waste too much time showing you guys you've seen the scraping process I'll bring you back uh, once we get this thing uh, dialed in. Well, guys, a little uh, problem here <clears throat> I need to work on, and I uh, thought I'd show this because uh, this is a, uh, you know, when I, you take the Richard King scraping class, he's always telling you, you got to be a detective. You got to figure out what's going on. And as I was scraping this, I was having problems on this side over here, where it seems like as I continued scraping it, I was getting less and less contact and something just wasn't adding up right. So I got to looking and uh, we'll take a piece of shim stock. This is one thousandth thick shim stock. And I go across the top of this and it will start to go in, but it was, doesn't go in very far. Now this should be clearance on the top. This is not a rubbing surface. All your rubbing surfaces are down here. Uh, and like I said, that shim stock won't go under it. Here, down here on the bottom, this is uh, uh, where the where we do want to have contact. 
Look at there. It's uh, sliding up in there all the way. So what has happened is as I have scraped this down, instead of contacting down here in the bottom, we're contacting on the top. There's just not a lot of clearance uh, between those, those areas. So what are we gonna do to fix that? This is a common problem, you know, as a machine wears, uh, as geometry changes, I would have thought there would have been a little bit more clearance in this. It didn't really look like there was that much wear, but apparently there is. So we're gonna take this over to the middle machine. We're gonna set this thing up and uh, I'm just going to cut, I don't know, probably five to 10 thousandths off the top up here to make sure we have plenty of clearance between here and where we're not gonna be interfering uh, in there at all. So that's the game plan. And uh, I'm gonna go get it set up on a mill machine. Well, as you can see, I decked the top of this. I ended up taking it to the surface grinder and I took, I think, five thousandths off of it. And that's, that gave me plenty of, uh, plenty of extra room up top where we weren't having any interference. And I've been back to scraping on this and I'm probably about done with it. I mean, we're printing off of the compound uh, where we've got some individual high points and we got the high points on here. And you know, this is, this is still probably 20 points per inch. Um, I'm, I'm happy with it. I think we're gonna be good. The other side looks very similar. So uh, we're gonna call that good. I think what I'm gonna work on now is the dovetail that goes in here. I need to match the dovetail uh, to this dovetail. And then once I do that, I need to turn around and do the other side, make sure that it's parallel. I'll probably use a straight edge on it because I don't have a gib here yet. And uh, after we make a new gib, we'll scrape the gib to max, match uh, this side over here. So continuing on, making progress. Well guys, as I get ready to start working on these dovetails, uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, call this video here done and we'll follow back up with the dovetails in a separate video. So it's just gonna be too long of a video if I try to do it all at once. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do. I've got this set up over here and yes, we're gonna start working on these. It's gonna be a little bit complicated because we are gonna have to be checking for parallelism and so forth. So I wanna make sure we have time to cover all that in an upcoming episode. So with that, that is going to be a wrap on this one. I'm happy that we got as far as we did. We got the uh, top part of this pretty much done and uh, we got the bottom sides of these done. I will probably go back and uh, double check them after we get the dovetails, maybe do a little fine tuning on them, uh, but we're at a good starting point for those and uh, moving along with this project. Uh, I know some folks have been saying that I've turned into the scraping channel and uh, really guys, that's not what's going on. Uh, I do some scraping because I, I'm rebuilding machines and scraping is part of rebuilding. And uh, when I'm doing that, that's what you get to see. Uh, but this piece here should be the last piece that needs to be scraped on this metal planer uh, restoration. And once that project is done, we're gonna move on to some other things. And yeah, we'll probably have some more scraping down the road in other projects, but uh, at least the next couple of things Probably won't have any scraping in them. Uh, anyway, I digress. With that, guys, thanks for watching. As always, uh, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, thumbs up are appreciated, as are those comments. And uh, we will catch you on the next video. Thanks for watching.